Hello everyone, thanks very much for joining me. I hope you're all well and thanks so much for all the likes, shares and comments on my videos. I'm very grateful for each and every one. And please let me know where you're watching from today. Today in Ireland, yet another day, yet more chaos as more rats are deserting the Irish political establishment sinking ship. The latest one has been Simon Coveney. Now that brings it to, I think, 12, 13. I think TD said he will not be running at the next election. Coveney still hasn't announced whether he's going to run at the next election, but we'll wait and see how that transpires. But he has omitted himself from Simon Harris's upcoming cabinet. Coveney is the Minister for Trade, Enterprise and Employment, has been a TD since 1998, has been part of the cabinet since 2011, ran in 2017 as leader of Fine Gael, got beaten by Farrakhar, despite having the majority of the party behind him. He was then Tanishta, and then Minister for Foreign Affairs, Minister for Housing, Minister for Defence, and as I said recently, Minister for Trade, Enterprise and Employment, a fully signed up member of the 1%, the super rich, the global corporations, and he supported them every single time. Famously said in 2017 that homelessness and he would end the use of hotels for people who are homeless by the middle of 2017. Since that, homelessness has doubled. So well done, Simon. You've departed the scene, leaving your legacy well and truly fermented in our society as a failure for housing. But again, his agenda is to support the super rich, the landlords, the vulture funds, developers, speculators, bankers, that's who Coveney supports every single time. But again, it might lead to a couple of political uncertainty here in Ireland because Simon Harris is awaiting a vote on April the 9th, whether he's going to be the new Taoiseach. He's currently rallying around a lot of the independents to try and get the numbers to be the new Taoiseach, the Taoiseach nobody wanted and the job that nobody wanted in Fine Gael. I would argue as well. But maybe Coveney has taken a step back to wait in the long grass and perhaps wait for an opportunity when Harris inevitably implodes in the next number of months in Irish society following the fallout of the disastrous referendum results for the Irish political establishment. And <laughs> that's not just the government, it's a lot of the opposition as well. And upcoming local and European elections and a possible general election thrown into the mix as well. So we see how that develops in the next period of time. But Coveney himself has spoken since Varadkar quit a week and a half ago about the need for stability. And he also said now he is the time to look for new voices in Fine Gael and new ideas. So are these new ideas going to be more of the same? People like Neil Richmond, Jennifer Carroll McNeil, Patrick O'Donovan. I don't see any change with those policies, perhaps worse as they'll use the agenda to pursue the, the agenda for the 1% and the big global corporations at the expense of ordinary people. Coveney himself will probably swan off and be on his yacht, maybe hang around with his friend from a uh, deposed chief of Abor Planala, Paul Hyde perhaps, in the next number of months. So it's quite interesting as well because Coveney was speaking about renewal, new ideas, new voices, and uh, over the last few weeks, he said he's been trying to steady the ship uh, and he's been 13 years at the centre of government and probably proud of his record of leading to devastation through his policies again. But as I said, Coveney is well beyond Ireland in terms of his influence. He's been a fully signed up member of the WEF, the Bilderberg Group as well, and has been pursuing those policies here in Ireland too at the behest of his globalist masters and his European Union masters and trying to drag us towards NATO as well, Simon Coveney. Not to mention the heartbreak he's caused in homelessness and housing, but trying to erode Irish neutrality as well. Now it's quite interesting these meetings he had with Bilderberg. He first attended a Bilderberg meeting I think in Copenhagen in 2014 where he was doorstepped by a couple of journalists, independent journalists I might add, not, not uh, mainstream media journalists because uh, he was there with Peter Sutherland, the Dublin-born father of globalism, a man who believes in the free market, 
which has caused such devastation around the world. And also he spoke about, he was the head of Goldman Sachs, I think as well, and the European Commissioner and the youngest Attorney General in Ireland, Peter Sutherland, who went to school in a private school as well, much the same like Simon Coveney. Uh, Sutherland went to Gonzaga College, Coveney went to Clongos Wood, I think. But it's interesting, the Bilderberg Group, uh, Coveney went to in 2014, went a number of times since, I think, and also has been a ever-present at Davos as well, getting his instructions from his globalist masters as well. And now the Bilderberg Group is interesting because that was set up in 1954 uh, for tr transatlantic elite, for dialogue between Europe and North America and to move towards a consensus around free market capitalism. And we've seen that, that damage and devastation that neoliberalism has caused in terms of privatization of a lot of our public assets in our society. We've seen it through devastating austerity that we bailed, were bailed out. Uh, bankers were bailed out. People had to foot the bill with a huge amount, over 40% of the total European bank in debt foisted upon the people of Ireland that led to absolute carnage and devastation in the, this country. And uh, not to mention, they've had many of these covert meetings which are completely anti-democratic. And these are the same people that talk about democracy. Isn't it ironic? Democracy and freedom. People like Dmitry Kaleba have been in attendance, the Ukrainian foreign minister at Lisbon last year, uh, the NATO's secretary general. We have head of intelligence agencies, CIA. We have big global Corporation bosses such as BP, Shell, Google, Goldman Sachs, many, many more. And uh, they all meet up and they have a good discussion and then they go back to their respective democracies, <laughs> inverted commas, democracies, and uh, implement the policies that favour and benefit the super rich. But of course, this is all in a code of omerta and silence because it is constrained by the Chatham House, house rules, which were founded in, uh, or first came to be, I think, in 1929, which were based on not reporting uh, on what events are taking place in terms of mentioning the people who made those comments at those meetings. So, for instance, if Sutherland said something about we need complete erosion of our democracy or whatever, uh, <laughs> that isn't reported on. And, of course, there's no journalists there. I think there's only three or four journalists with his hand. And a lot of these journalists would be part of this golden circle in the Bilderberg group as well. And uh, they work towards this idea, towards a single community. And then we see that being pushed on through the WEF as well, that Coveney has been a fully signed up member of as well. So uh, quite interesting. And when you consider the fallout and the impacts of these free market capitalism, we've seen it in terms of 63 billionaires having the same wealth as half the world's population. And if you consider that as well, domestically here in Ireland, you have two billionaires that have the same wealth as 50% of our population here in Ireland, which is two and a half million people. It's grotesque, it's obscene, but it demonstrates who these people work for. And in the context of our homelessness disaster, in the context of our health disaster, education and so forth, and so many people struggling to get by with 900,000 people in deprivation, which is one of five people here in Ireland in deprivation as well. But this is who they always support, and this is who they bow down to. And that Coveney is no change to the status quo. So let's see how Coveney's career pushes on from here. Maybe move to a job in Europe, perhaps. Maybe he could possibly wait in the long grass for Harris to implode. And uh, let's see. But I'm sure the policies won't change. And we'll see over the next number of days how this develops again. I'm sure there's plenty more twists and turns to see in this political chaos as well because the doll here in Ireland isn't due to resume until next week another lengthy Easter break for the politicians and the political establishment in Ireland licking their wounds after the resounding defeat in the referendums where the people have risen so uh, thanks very much for supporting my videos thanks for the likes shares and comments and also thanks to people who support me through buy me a coffee if you like my videos please press like to my Facebook page subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on various other platforms as well. So from Dublin today, take care, and I'll talk to you all too. Slán, thanks for joining me. Mind yourselves, bye bye.